my name is Patricia Sanford and I'm director at the Maryland Archaeological Conservation Lab at Jefferson Patterson Park and Museum. And today what we're going to be doing is learning an easy method for marbling paper. So it's very easy uh, to make paper that has got all of these beautiful designs on it and we're going to learn how to do that today. It's always interesting to know the history of a craft. Um, marbling paper was believed to have originated in Japan sometime in the 12th century. Uh, they do a, a type of painting called sumi there that uses inks on paper, and it is believed that somebody accidentally submerged a sumi painting, and the excess ink floated up to the top of the surface of the water, and someone took a piece of paper and, and laid it down on top of the, the water, and it absorbed the ink. So that's how it's believed that marbling paper originated. Now, in Turkey, Persia, which is today is Iran, and India, they had a type of marbling paper called ebru. Now, ebru stands for cloud art, and you can see why looking at this illustration that uh, that name comes to mind. Um, they use thickened water, which is the technique that we are going to use today. Now, in the 16th and the 17th century, marbling paper came to Europe, but it was a secret that was closely guarded. Um, in the middle of the 18th century, Frenchman Denis Diderot published an illustration of a marbling workshop. But it wasn't until 1853 when Englishman Charles Woolnow published The Art of Marbling that the secret was really revealed. Now, marbling was used primarily in the 18th and 19th century to decorate books. You can see this volume from the MacLab Library has got marbled paper on the front, on the end pieces, and even on the ends of the, the pages. And we have these wonderful marbled ceramics um, made in England in the early 1800s uh, in our collection. Um, and some more examples. These uh, are slip combed uh, ceramics with some of the types of decoration we'll be using today. Uh, these were made in the mid to late uh, 1700s in England as well. So this is how I became interested in the techniques of marbling um, and wanted to be able to share that with you all today. All right, so here are the supplies that we will need uh, to do our marble paper today. And most of these are things that you already have around your house. Paint brushes of various sizes. Um, today we're gonna to be using acrylic paints. Um, you can also use tempera paints, watercolors, uh, oil paints. Even, even ink, but today we're gonna to be using acrylic paints to make our marbled paper. Cups to hold the thin paints. Liquid starch, uh, which is the thickened substance upon which we will actually float the paints to make the paper. A Sharpie uh, to mark your paper before you um, uh, marble it. A supply that might be in your spice cabinet, it is alum, powdered alum, and uh, this is some, what we will use to prepare the paper to accept the paint, and we'll go over that step in a few minutes. Two shallow-sided pans. I'm using a cookie sheet uh, and a jelly roll pan. Uh, they don't need to be um, tall-sided or, or anything like that. Anything shallow works incredibly well. You'll need paper, and then these are two optional tools, uh, which you can find some substitutes for around your house, and we'll talk about how the, these are used later. An entirely optional step in the process of marbling paper is to treat your paper with uh, a chemical compound of alum and water. Um, and alum is a powdered chemical compound uh, that you might have in your spice cabinet at home because it helps to make pickles crisp if you're making pickles. Um, but it's also used uh, to fix color when uh, fabric is being dyed. And so that is how it works in this situation. It helps make your colors adhere better to the paper and makes them crisper um, and won't run. And we'll see a, a an example later of how some of the colors on my paper ran when I did not treat, uh, treat the paper with alum water first. Now to make this, um, you would dissolve one tablespoon of alum in one cup of water. All right, so here's all, what you do. I find that, that one of these uh, foam brushes works really well. Um, before you get started, what you wanna do is take a, a 
permanent marker and mark one side of your paper. And because alum water is colorless when the paper dries, you're not going to be able to tell which side of your paper is treated if you don't mark it first. So I mark the side uh, that we are not going to treat. I flip it over, the mark on the back, and then just brush a solution. It doesn't have to be very much um, or very thick onto your paper and just coat uh, every surface and then let it dry. You'll see that the paper is beginning to buckle up. Um, that's perfectly fine. Once it's dry, I usually take it and iron it uh, and flatten out all of the wrinkles and the buckles in the paper. You want your product, your paper before you marble to be as flat as possible so that it will absorb the, the paint evenly. And it's best to treat your paper within three weeks of using it because the, the alum uh, won't work as well after that period. All right, now it's time to actually start the marbling. Before you begin, you're gonna to wanna to protect your table uh, with a plastic tablecloth. Um, if you are messy or if you're doing this with children, you might wanna put on an apron or some old clothes that you don't mind getting paint on. All right, so we've got uh, some colors here of acrylic paint that have been thinned with water down to about the consistency of regular milk. This pan has got liquid starch poured into it. Um, I just use straight liquid starch poured to about half an inch depth. And then the second pan just has water in it. And this is the pan that we're going to use to rinse the paper after the paint has been transferred to it. And that helps rinse off some of that liquid starch. All right, let's get started. So just choose a color, um, dip your paintbrush in. And then here's the, the messy part. Just tap it onto the surface of your liquid starch. And you can see how it's spreading out across the top. And pick a second color, tap those in. Um, if you like this kind of bubble uh, or circular type pattern, uh, you could just go ahead and um, Put your paper down um, on this type of, of surface. So the spots that don't have paint will come out as white or whatever the background color of the paper uh, that you use. Um, I have been experimenting with a bunch of different types of paper uh, from cardstock to just regular like color uh, copier uh, paper and I found that the, the thinner um, Less heavy papers uh, seem to work better to me than the, the heavier cardstock, but you can certainly um, use um, both of those or any of those different types of. You can see how the colors blend and kind of push each other out of the way. All right, now you could stop here um, and just marble your paper or transfer the color to your paper as is. Um, but I'm going to do some manipulation. So I'm going to take the end of a paintbrush um, and I'm going to drag the colors together. So you can see how that's creating an effect that's similar to some of that pottery that we saw uh, from the Mac Lab earlier. stop right here. Um, I'm going to do what we call combing. Uh, this is a piece of plywood that has a bunch of, of nails, narrow nails uh, in it. You could try this at home with a comb um, or uh, you could uh, sandwich some nails uh, in between two pieces of cardboard held together with uh, duct tape, which is uh, what I did before I had this. Um, so maybe you, you take this comb and just drag it down through your colors. And you can see that it is creating a slip comb effect. All right, so I think I'm going to use my paper to transfer this design. So remember when, if you have uh, 
put alum on your paper, remember uh, that you have uh, which side that you put the alum on. Uh, here I wrote back to show that it is the, the back side of the paper. And then just take your paper, very carefully suspend it over the surface of the liquid starch, and then just uh, drop it down here first. And then you can gently kind of tap the paper to make sure that it transfers uh, in case there's any buckles in your paper. And then this paper makes it easy for me. <laughs> it sort of curls itself up. And you just drop it in the water. Rinse some of that extra pigment uh, and uh, liquid starch off. And there's your paper. Now, you can either lay these flat to dry and then again iron them. Um, if there's any buckling, or you can hang them to dry as well. Now you don't have to treat your paper with alum water, um, but here's what happens if, if you don't. So this example here is on a sheet of paper that wasn't treated with alum. And you can see how the purple, uh, the excess uh, pigment has flowed out and uh, kind of muddied the design. This piece here, the paper was treated with alum beforehand and you can see the crispness of the edges of the purple and all of the colors. So while it's not necessary, it does create a nicer final product. All right, now that you've made all of this marble paper, what are you going to do with it? Well, here's some ideas. Uh, you can make note cards uh, that anybody would be pleased to get, uh, bookmarks, uh, you can cover uh, boxes, or even cover the, the covers of handmade books. So the ideas are endless. Today we marbled paper with acrylic paints, but these are examples of some of the pieces of paper that I made using inks that I had at home, and I just floated them right on the surface of plain water. Um, and there are a number of good videos on how you can do this at home. And you can see how they range uh, from very pale and delicate to, to very vibrant in color. And so it creates an entirely different sort of look than, uh, than the marbled paper technique with acrylic paint that we use today. We hope you've enjoyed and will be inspired to try paper marbling at home.